responsibly. Chapter 4, verse 10 to 23. The Bible says in verse 10, And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish, so that we are not able to build the wall. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bowls, and the halberdians, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. <coughs> For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side, and so builded, and he that sounded the trumpet was by me. In what place, therefore, ye hear the sound of the trumpet? Resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, Let every one with his servant lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I, nor my brethren, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our coats, saving that every one put them off. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you, dear Lord, for another privilege to once again continue studying your word um, in, the, in the book of Nehemiah. I pray, Lord, that you uh, help us uh, see principles this morning about um, how we can overcome uh, discouragement inside our church and how to be an encouragement, dear Lord, to those who are uh, uh, feeling weak and are discouraged by the tactics of the devil. I pray, Lord, that as we study this, we'll realize how important uh, you are uh, to us and the church that you have established, the brethren that you have given us, dear Lord. You please uh, help me as I uh, preach. May the Holy Spirit work freely in our midst, and uh, may everyone have a humble heart in order to be uh, willing to be corrected by the Word of God. For these things I pray in His name. Amen. So uh, before I start, I would like to ask uh, uh, you guys to pray for, because this today... Uh, Teacher Nimol and Teacher Samnao will be talking to the family of one of uh, our attenders in Chansol. She and I know you have seen her every youth youth camp here. Uh, her name is Kope, and I would be, I have been waiting for her to be grade ten so that we can take her in. But uh, for some reason they were shy to tell us the uh, for about their needs, so they just went somewhere else and. Uh, Para ba nang hinayang naman ako ilang taon na sa amin and then mawala na lang. So, uh, Teacher Nimol will be talking to their parents today and hopefully everything will uh, work out okay and she can be able to transfer to Shimrip. But I was talking to our pastor. The problem was uh, lodging. We, uh, we don't know where she's uh, going to stay but I know that the Lord will show us the way because I believe that she has potential and that she's very studious and she's always present during our worship service. And hopefully the uh, Holy Spirit and the Lord can use us for her uh, to be uh, genuinely saved and also uh, someday to be used of God also. So please pray for that. And uh, today, 
the past few preachings we've had ang pamilya po no no that's good po so he doesn't know how to play <laughs> okay so the last uh, few preachings we've had in your chapter 4 we kind of uh, uh, parked into in some verses and then uh, looked at uh, scriptures that's why we had like three or two verses every preaching but today we're, we'll, we'll fin we're finishing chapter 4 hopefully uh, no, will not take uh, too much time but uh, as a way of introduction uh, we saw uh, last week that the enemies were trying to level up their threats and all of these things against uh, Israel because as they see that the work is being done as, as, as they see that uh, these Israelites can actually finally finish building the wall and they are not being discouraged by the things that they have tried at them before now they have uh, tried to threaten their lives and we saw that Nehemiah upon hearing that uh, he encouraged the people but now here in um, here in here in uh, this chapter uh, with all the voices with all the threats and we pick up here in verse number 10 um, where the people are starting to wear out to, to wear down okay they're tr tr uh, starting to get tired of what's happening maybe because of the work maybe because of the people who keeps talking maybe because um, the threat is uh, playing on their minds and maybe they're afraid Okay, now they're starting to get discouraged because they've been doing this uh, great work and they've been doing it, uh, they've been uh, uh, doing it in great time, but all of this finally caught up to them. You know, uh, this is, there's a time in our uh, life when, when we keep on working, working for the Lord, that even though how, how we rely on the Lord and, and we put our trust in Him, there will be ta a time that uh, some people will be tired, some people will be worn out, some people will be discouraged. But uh, that doesn't mean that the work has to stop. That doesn't mean that the work has to, uh, what do you call this, to be hindered, okay? As we can see here in this chapter, because as, uh, as a great man of God, as Nehemiah uh, was, and, and is asking uh, wisdom from the Lord, he was able to encourage these discouraged people again, to again uh, work for the Lord. And we must realize first, this way of introduction is, uh, realize and accept that discouragement will come. It will come to everyone. I don't, I don't know of any person or I don't know if you can honestly raise your hand and say, I have never been discouraged. That is impossible. You've all, you, every one of us has, have been through discouragement. It, it, it might be because of others. If you're even in the church, we're discouraged because of, pe of our own brethren. Discouragement are people who will quit. Discouraged people are people who will not be very useful in the work of the Lord. If you are discouraged, wala kang ganang magtrabaho. If you are discouraged, wala kang ganang gumawa sa Panginoon. If you are discouraged, then maybe ang gusto mo meron ding ibang ma-discourage katulad mo. And uh, w w that's why God will not use a discouraged person or a discouraged person will not be willing to be used of God. Now, as a church, we must be discerning enough to know which people are discouraged in the midst of us. Because there are people who are down. There are people who are not in the same, uh, who, has, who does not have the same fire that we have. Uh, and, and, and thinking that someday we might also be discouraged instead of be, being someone who, 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 who pushes them aside because they are, are trying to slow down the work. We should be willing to, for a while to stop working and help our brethren. And then as, as, and, and, and just uh, help them get back on their feet uh, uh, un, until the time that they are able to work with us again. So this is what happens here in uh, uh, the rest of chapter 4. They are, get, they are starting to get discouraged. Now, let us look at the source of their discouragement. Why did they get discouraged? Now, verse 10 here says, And Judah said. Now, those first three uh, words there are very informative to us. The discouragement or the, the words of discouragement came from the tribe of Judah. Okay, and, and uh, it says a lot because this was supposed to be the tribe that is brave. This is supposed to be the tribe that is uh, working and, 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 and this is the tribe where kings uh, uh, came from and where eventually Christ himself will be coming from. But the discouragement or the complaints are coming from them. 
uh, from the people that uh, from the tribe that the people look up to from the tribe that the people uh, know that they are the ones that are brave they're the ones who go to battle they're the ones who always uh, fight for the Lord but this time these people that are that are being looked up to are the people who are being discouraged or are the people who are saying all these discouraging words Genesis, Genesis 49 verse 8 says Judah thou art he whom thy brethren shall praise thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies thy father's children shall bow down before thee and this tribe people look to them in order to be leaders to be people who will rally them if they're discouraged or they're afraid Judah will be the the people who will rally them to be to fight for the Lord to be brave to do what we that we have to do for the Lord but this time the discouragement is coming from the, these very people and sometimes, you know, when, when, whenever, if we are, are going to apply it to our church, when discouragement comes from those people who you look up to, it hits you harder. Okay? When, when discouragement comes from people who stand behind the pulpit, discouragement comes from people, from your parents, or from the people who are leading us spiritually, when you see that they're discouraged, you'll be affected also. When you see that they're the ones saying discouraging words, it will hit the church harder. Imagine if I preach here and say, we can never do anything. We can never make anything work. We should just stop. We should just go back to what we're, whatever we're doing. And, and maybe more than a few of you will be discouraged as well. Now, this is what's happening to them. Uh, the, the people who they least expect to be tired, the people who they least expect to be discouraged, the people who they least expect to be afraid are the, are the very people who are standing up and telling Nehemiah all these things. That's why uh, as leaders, as people who, who God placed in a, 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 a position of leadership, we should be people who, sh who should always encourage ourselves in the Lord. Because we are the people, uh, whether we like it or not, people look to us. Whether we like it or not, people are examining our lives. Whether we like it or not, people are, are uh, looking at what we're saying. Not only in the church, but as Christians in general. I, I, as long as people outside the church know and you proclaim that you're a believer, that you're a Christian, you should be a person that they will see encouragement from. Okay? You should be a person that they will see enthusiasm and joy unspeakable that they cannot explain so that they will be, uh, uh, what do you call this, they will be uh, attracted to what you believe and, 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 and what you believe as a Christian. Kaya po bilang Christiano, if we have friends outside uh, the church, if we have friends that are unbeliever, tapos sila pa ang mas maayos kesa sa atin, mahirap po silang dalhin sa Panginoon. Kaya nga po, kung tayo mga Christiano, nagsasabi na sumusunod tayo sa Panginoon that we're believers of Christ, people should see that in us. People should see something different. They should see that in times of crisis, we are the ones who are encouraging them. In times of trouble, we're the ones who are still joyful. Even though we don't have uh, all the things that they have, we can still have joy in the Lord. And because of these things, even though we don't believe in lifestyle evangelism, because of these things, they will be attracted to Jesus that is living in our hearts. That's why it's very hard when discouragement comes from people who, are, uh, who you look up to or you expect a lot from them. Lalo kang discourage them. Kaya nga po, bilang mga tao na, na pinlays ng Panginoon sa leadership, we should realize this. It turns out that uh, uh, the reason why these this, this people are discouraged, there were two reasons, okay? Uh, let's go to, go to chapter 6, Nehemiah chapter 6, verse 17. And let's read until verse 19. It says here, Moreover, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters unto Tobiah, and the letters of Tobiah came unto them. For there were many in Judah sworn unto him. What's the reason? Because he was the son-in-law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara. And his son, Johanan, had, had taken the daughter of Mehulam, the son of Berechiah. And also they reported his good deeds before me and uttered my words to him. And Tobiah sent letters to put me in fear. The reason why Judah... And, and well, the reason why discouragement came from this tribe of Judah was because of wrong relationships marriage and and their relationship with their relatives were more important to them than the work of the lord and they were again needless to say they were married to the wrong people they had relationship with the wrong people they had ties with the wrong people and somehow they were connected to tobiah that's why they were sending letters to him Tobiah was sending letters to them also. So in, in a way, they are spies. They are traitors. They're the ones who are, even though they're working, even though masipag sila, gumagawa rin sila, just like the rest of the Israelites, these people are secretly communicating with the enemy. 
Kaya nga po sa simbahan, hindi po basta masipag, gumagawa kasama natin, ay talagang kasama natin. At talagang kakampi natin. You know why? Because if the devil are, are, is planting people in the church, then they will do their best to look like Christians. They will do their best to look like people who are really following Christ. Because if they come to church and do their best to look like the devil, then they're not going to do any harm to us. But these people, until the completion of half of the wall, they were there. Nobody thought that they were communicating with the enemies. Nobody thought that they had wrong relationships. Nobody suspected them. It reminds me a lot of Judas. Nobody suspected the guy. Nobody thought that he was the one who will betray Christ. But he was so good in disguising himself. He was so good in pretending to be a Christian that he made the most damage during that time. Kaya nga po, hindi naman makakadamage ang mga kaaway kung hindi nila tayo mapepenetrate muna. Okay? Kung nandiyan lang sila sa labas, they can never do anything to us. Pwede sila magsalita, but we can just not mind them. But once they penetrate the church, once they, they, they put themselves in uh, positions where people can trust them, then that's when they can do the most damage. Kaya nga po, bilang mga uh, leaders, bilang mga Kristiyano, we should be discerning. Not discerning in a way na alamin natin sino yung mga yan para mapalayas. No. Da, alamin natin kung sino yung mga tao na sa, te- na, na sa tingin nila sila iligtas, ngunit hindi. Na even though they believe that they really saved, for the attitude or the reason na mapaliwanag natin sa kanila sila someday maligtas. Kasi po kaya minsan, nagmumuka tayo mga pariseyo, nagmumuka tayo mga uh, holier than thou, mga judgmental. It's because that once we know the truth, about the salvation, once we know the truth about repentance and faith and, and, and people changing their lives, we go, on judge, we go around and judging people. Ah, hindi ka pa nagbago, hindi ka ligtas. Ah, ganito ka, hindi ka pa ligtas. That is the wrong attitude. Yeah. Ang tunay na attitude na, kaya pinaalam sa atin ito ng Panginoon is to discern who these people are and do our best to make them realize that so that they will come in repentance and faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Yung po'y tunay na, tunay na, uh, <coughs> No, gale, because um, I, I was chatting with someone uh, the other day and she was our visitor. And she said that, sabi ko, ano ba yung mga narinig mo sa preaching na hindi ka com- comfortable with? Sabi niya, hindi ako comfortable dun sa mag-preach ka behind the pulpit to put doubts in the minds of people regarding their salvation. Sabi niya, dapat nga, ina-assure lang natin sila. Dapat hindi, na, hindi tayo nagpe-preach ng gano'n. Dapat, sina, dapat ina-assure daw natin sila na naniwala na kayo, na, na, you put your faith, mga save na kayo. Dapat daw gano'n yung preaching. But uh, uh, by the grace of God, I was able to explain to her uh, using the Word of God kung bakit gano'n ang ating preaching. Why? Because hindi ba nakakalungkot na, kunyari, puro assurance na lang ang sinasabi ko, ay lalo kang ma- maniniwala na ligtas ka kahit na hindi and someday hindi ka, uh, uh, pupunta ka rin sa impyerno. Mas tragic yun. Kesa naman, masaya tayo ngayon sa, sa church natin, but there are people who are not genuinely saved. The reason why God let us know that so that we can help them out. Now, these people uh, were, uh, were able to, to work with them, to build the wall and all of these things when they had a, 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 a ties or relationship with the enemies. Kaya nga po, we can never express the importance enough na hindi po tayo, we're not supposed to be yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Why? Because God, the devil can use that relationship to destroy not only you, but people who are around you. Not only you, but even, eventually the church. Di po ba, hindi po ba nakakalungkot na merong isang attender dito, palagi nag and someday mawawala na lang dahil nag ng unbeliever. Yeah. discourage din po ang simbahan. Malulungkot din. Kaya nga po, ingat po tayo. The relationships we have outside can affect the church. Kaya nga po, ingatan po natin kung sino yung ating mga kasama. Hindi lang po yung relasyon ng pag-aasawa, pag uh, pagrelasyon but even friendship ingat din po tayo not only because of the ties of marriage or they they, they were uh, uh, related to the enemies but here in Nehemiah chapter 13 uh, jumping to that i'm going to read verse 15 to 22 and explain later in those days <clears throat> so i in judah some treading uh, treading wine presses on the sabbath and bringing in sheaves and lading asses, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all uh, uh, manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish and all manner of ware, and sold on the Sabbath unto the ju- children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Verse 18. Did not your fathers thus, and did not our God bring all this evil upon us, upon this city? Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. 
And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates uh, uh, sh uh, should be shut and charged that they should not be opened till, the, till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should, be no, should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. Now we, we, uh, we learned even yesterday, I believe that was yesterday, and even in the life Psych, uh, the life of the uh, uh, people of Israel that whenever there's work and there's a need and there's danger they can come together and work for the Lord but then when, when they finish the work and time of prosperity comes and, and, and time of comfort uh, comes these people will show their true colors now this is what happens to Judah now they're showing their true colors why were they building the wall in the first place because they wanted to have, uh, to have freedom to do business now that's not, that's not bad Okay. Maganda naman na they were trading and, 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 and doing uh, uh, something para makumita sila. But in these verses that we've read, they were doing it in the Sabbath day. They were doing it in the day where everyone was supposed to be resting. And it shows na ang kanilang puso hindi talaga para sa Panginoon kung hindi para kumita, kung hindi para sa pera. That's the reason why these people of Judah uh, uh, during this time, uh, that they, not only that they had the wrong relationships, but they had the wrong heart. They had the wrong purpose. They wanted this wall to be built so that someday they can freely do their business. And they don't care whether it's the Sabbath day, they're still going to do business. Kaya nga si Nehemiah, nakita niya, Sabbath day, bakit nagtatrabaho itong mga to? Sabbath day, bakit nakikipag-trade sila? Uh, they, well, when they should be resting, everyone should be resting. Wala dapat uh, uh, trade, wala dapat business during the Sabbath day. Why are they doing that? Kaya nga po mga kapatid, bilang mga Kristiyano, lilitaw at lilitaw po kung ano yung nasa ating puso when it comes uh, the, uh, sa, sa oras na pwede tayong pumili. Kunwari, linggo, meron kang trabaho, merong, uh, merong service, anong pipiliin natin? Now, uh, you can be here every Sunday, worshiping with us, praising the Lord and all these things. Madali, kasi walang trabaho. Paano kung may trabaho na po ng linggo? Do, then then the, the real test comes. Lilitaw kung ano talaga ang mahalaga sa'yo. Lilita ko ano talaga ang nasa puso mo kung meron ng choice. Why? Wala ka nang wala naman tayong choice ngayon eh. Okay, wala namang pasok sa Florida. Wala rin namang pasok sa ibang lugar. And then uh, 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 madali lang dumating sa sa, sa sa simbahan, walang mawawala sa iyo. But papaano po kung ang araw ng linggo meron nang mawawala sa iyo financially? Meron nang mawawala sa iyo when it comes to your career. Pipiliin mo pa rin ba ang Panginoon? Kaya nga po itong mga tao na ito, lumitaw ako, tutunay na sa kanilang puso. They don't care about the Sabbath day. All they care about was working. That's why we have to be uh, careful with that as well. Kaya nga po, we have to be able to be deserving as well. Another uh, discerning, another source of their discouragement, we can find it in verse 12, chapter 4, verse 12. Even though we're jumping to that, but it's very important. Nehemiah 4, 12, 72, And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwelt by them came, they said unto us ten times, From all places whence ye shall return unto us, they will be upon you. Napakaliwanag po that these people were living near the enemies. Kapit bahay po nila yung mga kaaway. Okay? Kapit ka, malapit lang po sa kanila yung mga tao nagsasalita na papatayin namin kayo. Ngayon po kung tayo, lagi po tayo malapit sa mga tao na hindi anak ng Panginoon, madali ka rin may discourage Imagine, they're living near the people who are planning to kill them. Hindi ba sila matatakot? They're living near the people who, who, these people, all they talk about was to plan how to kill these people who are building the wall. Talagang matatakot sila. Madidiscourage siya, madidiscourage sila. Kaya nga po bilang mga tao ng Panginoon, dapat po malapit tayo sa mga kapwa natin mananampalataya. Doon po tayo close kasi doon manggagaling ang encouragement. Doon po manggagaling ang strength. Hindi po sa mga tao na hindi anak ng Diyos. If we, pagka po ikaw bilang believer, you, 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 you have a problem, you have all these things, and the, your default is to go to unbelievers, there's something wrong with you. Kaya nga po hindi, ang nga namang gamitin ng Panginoon sila para encourage ka. Ang babuksan nila yung Bible, encourage ka nila. No, they cannot do that. Why? Because they're not children of God. Kaya nga po bilang mga, uh, if, if you're a believer, and you think that you can be close to unbelievers and not be burned, then you have another thing coming. Ma madali ka pong ma-discourage kung malapit tayo sa mga tao na hindi anak ng Panginoon. I'm not saying na hindi tayo makapagkaibigan sa kanila, no? Okay, uh, how else can we win them if we don't? But they should not be the people who are closest to us. Hindi sila yung dapat nasa inner circle natin. Hindi sila yung dapat na, na binibigyan natin ng at sinasabihan natin ng ating mga problema. Dapat itong mga to ay ating mga kapatiran sa Panginoon. Kaya nga po itong mga tao to, 
no wonder they got discouraged and, and afraid easily. Why? Because they were living near the enemies. They can hear that. They can hear them planning. They know that this plan is going to work. We're all going to die. Now, uh, what, what, when they got discouraged, what was the result in their lives? Going back to verse number 10. And Judah said, The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed. Now, the, the result of discouragement first is they became weak. We know in verse 6 that uh, they were able to, to build uh, uh, the wall up unto the half thereof. Now, ito yung pinaka, this is the most dangerous time for the work of the Lord. When you're halfway there. Why? Because you've already done so much and you look ahead, there's still so much more to be done. Kaya nga po dito yung time na talagang pwede ka ma-discourage, talagang pwede ka mapagod. Why? Ang dami na nilang nagawa. Nakalahati na, maybe they looked and it's already, uh, we already finished half but we're tired and we're not even there yet. We're not even near the end of this. Now, they look at that and now they got dito, they got uh, 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 tired. They, they became weak. Now, the first, uh, maybe when you're discouraged now, there are a lot of uh, results of discouragement. But to these people, the first result is that their strength was decayed. They, they became weak. To the point when they feel that ayaw na nilang magpatuloy. Hindi na nila kaya magpatuloy. Now, this is a point in your lives and in my life. I know that we have felt this before, that we have burned out. And, and, and that we are tired. And if you have been faithfully working for the Lord, there's going to be a point in, in, in time when we say that we've had enough. We've done enough. Okay na to, pagod na ako, pwede na siguro to Miguel. Why? I've already done so much. I know there's still a lot more to be done, but let, let the other people do that. Okay? Ayoko na, titigil na ako dito. Now, when, when, when this kind of thing comes to your mind, remember that we get our strength from nowhere else but the Lord. We get our strength from no one else but the Lord. The answer to this kind of problem is to wait for the Lord to give us strength. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. People who become tired and decide to stop because, of, of, because, because they are tired are forgetting that they have the, a, a God who's supplying the strength to them. Kaya nga po, hindi naman po maubusan ng pagsusupply ng strength ang Panginoon sa atin. Kaya po wag tayong titigil. Kaya nga po, minsan pagpagod ka, wag ka mag-decide na tumigil. Pag napagod ka, wag ka mag-decide na huminto na lang. Why? Because lahat naman mapapagod. Eh, eh, every time na lang mapapagod ka, titigil ka na. Hindi po ganun. Sa basketball mo nga, kahit litaw, lowit na ang dila, pag nag-aya pa, laro pa eh. Sa gawain pa kaya ng Panginoon. Napagod ka na, patuloy lang po. Um, these people, because they got discouraged, they, they got tired. They forgot that they get their, uh, they, they, that they get their strength for the Lord. Not only that they got tired, but it says here again in verse 10 that um, Isaiah 4.10, uh, Nehemiah 4.10. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish. Not only that they got tired or they became weak, but they lost their focus. Tinignan na po nila ang negative side no, when, when they started doing this work, I believe that the rubbish were already there. Yeah. Nandiyan na yan, yung, yung, yung gulo. Diba, remember in, in, in chapter 1, ang, ang state of Jerusalem, the wall is broken down, the city is burning, a lot of rubbish around, it's not a place where you can live. Now, Nehemiah went there, encouraged them to build, the rubbish was there. But then Nehemiah pointed them to the Lord. The Lord is behind this work. We should all work. And they got encouraged and they did the work until the half thereof. But they, uh, somewhere along the way, because they got discouraged, they stopped looking to the Lord and then looked at all this rubbish around them. Okay? The, the Bible says that there is much rubbish. Sabi nila. When this rubbish was there, even before they began building. Why? But the difference is they were not looking at that when they were building. They were looking to, on the Lord. They were looking, looking to the Lord. But because of discouragement, it can make you lose your focus. It can make you lose your focus. And we, we will know later on that because of this rubbish, the, uh, this the reason why they, they felt insecure. But one lesson we can learn here is that when we are faced with a great task, when we are try, tr starting to get discouraged because of the greatness of the task, dahil marami tayong dapat gawin, wag po natin tignan kung ano yung dami ng ating dapat gawin. Tignan po natin kung ano lang yung next step natin gagawin. Just one step ahead. Tapusin natin ito after that, what's the next step? What's the next goal? Start doing that and doing that and then uh, all of a sudden, may kita natin, tapos agad. Just like these people, they didn't realize, 
Kalahati na pala agad. Why? Because they were just focused on the job. They were just focused on what they are, were they, they are supposed to do. But since they got this courage na wala yung focus na ito, nakita na nila kung gaano pala kadami pa. Marami pa palang lilinisin. Kailangan pa pala natin tanggalin itong mga top bago natin tapusin itong wall. Pagod na kami. Hindi na natin kaya. And there's still so much, uh, so much to be done. And they fail to again put their focus on, uh, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Kaya nga po ang solusyon dito sa gantong klaseng uh, bagay pagka po tayo ay uh, uh, tawag dito na nahihirapan and then we lose our focus is to again refocus. Refocus lang po. Sino po ba talaga ang, 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 ang uh, bakit po ba talaga natin ginagawa ang ginagawa natin? Because if, if somewhere along the way you lose the, uh, the purpose or the reason why you're doing it in the first place, talaga mawawala yung focus natin. But then, this time, uh, itong mga bagay nito, they will surely come. But then we should learn how to be able to refocus on the Lord. Not only that they, 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 uh, they lost their focus, but it says here that so that we are not able to build the wall. They have lost their confidence. Hindi na po nila ngayon pinaniniwalaan na kaya nilang tapusin ang gawain or ang pagbibuild ng wall. In the first place, kung ito talaga yung paniniwala nila, hindi sana nila sinimulan. Diba? But they started doing it because they believe that they can finish it. But because of discouragement, nagbago ang kanilang mindset. Hindi natin kayang tapusin. Why? Ang dami pang gagawin. Ang dami pang dumi. Ang dami pa natin clear. We cannot do this. Now, because of the discouragement, they became weak. They lost their focus. Now they have lost their confidence. Why? The reason why you lose your confidence is because you put your confidence in yourself. If you put your confidence in yourself, once you realize that you're weak, you will stop. Once you realize that you're limited, you will stop. And you will realize that you're weak and limited somehow. You will somehow realize na, na discouraged ka na, na hina ka na, na hindi ko pala talaga kaya. I will just stop. Right? Because it's true, you're weak. Kaya nga po, uh, yesterday I was talking to Ponlu. He said that uh, when we were on our, on our way to go to Van's house, he said that, I don't know if the Lord can use me because I'm just, uh, I, I'm nobody. That's what he said. I'm weak. I don't, know, I don't know anything. He said, I told him that's a good thing to think. To think that you're nobody. Because once you start to think that you're somebody, then the Lord's not going to use you. Kaya nga po, kaso nga lang, ano yung resulta sa atin? When once you start realizing that you're really weak and you're nobody, instead of being discouraged, trust more on the Lord who's giving us all of these things. Kaya nga po maganda. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. La, ang, ang, ang nagbibigay po sa atin ng, ng enablement para tapusin ang gawain ng Panginoon, gawin ang gawain ng Panginoon, walang iba kung hindi ang Panginoon din. The word strengtheneth here means to enable. And if the Lord is the one who's enabling us, He's more than able to enable us to finish the work. Kaya nga po, patuloy lang po tayo. If we see ourselves as weak, as limited people, it's because we are weak and we are limited. But we don't get our strength from ourselves. But we get it for the Lord. That's why they have lost their confidence. Aren't you glad that ang tangi nating responsibility is to put our trust in the Lord? Amen. That is our responsibility. And the rest of it, it's the Lord's work. It's the Lord's job. It's the Lord's job. Our own responsibility, bantayan lang natin, patuloy pa ba ako nagtitiwala sa Panginoon o ginagawa ko na ito na sarili kong lakas? Patuloy pa ba ako nagre-rely sa Holy Spirit or am I just doing this with my own strength, with my own mind? And if we realize that we're do doing that, then we're gonna get tired, we're gonna get discouraged, we're gonna get weak, we're gonna lose our focus. But then, uh, uh, praise the Lord na hindi lang po one chance ang binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. That we can stand back up, refocus, put our confidence in God and then continue doing the work of the Lord. And then the, the, the people here have lost their confidence. But here in verse 11, not only that, it says here, And our adversary said, They shall not know, neither see, till we come in the midst among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. Not only have they lost all those things, but now they have lost their sense of security. Because of all this rubbish lying around, all of these uh, uh, stones and, uh, and big stones and everything, what they heard the people, the plan of the people are, that they're going to go in, uh, 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 at night time hide uh, behind those rubbish and all these things and then when they are least expecting it they're gonna come out and kill all, this, all of these people and now the, the, uh, the people of God saw that this is very much possible for them to do maganda yung plano ng kaaway magtatago sila dun sa mga uh, 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 dume magtatago sila dun sa mga gulo and then after that when the night time comes or when they're least expecting it lilitaw sila papatayin sila 
Yun yung plano. Now, because of all these things, they have lost their po- focus, they became weak and all these things, now they have lost their sense of security. Now, para sa kanila, hindi na kami safe. Pwede na kaming mamatay. Now, this is the time na tigilan na natin to. Okay? Pwede na tayong mamatay, we can lose our lives, we can lose our comfort, we can lose our family. Now, I think it's better for us to just stop and just focus on what we were doing before. Now, this, ta- this thing can come po sa atin. And I believe that I, I have uh, preached about this a bit last week. But once you, once you are being threatened of your security and your comfort and your family, that is the time that the test is really at its worst. Na pwedeng, pwede ka nang tumigil. Nobody will blame you if you stop working for your family. Nobody will blame you if you stop working to protect the quality of your life. But then you think about it. Is that really more important than the calling of the Lord sa atin? Is that really more important? Do I, I really, really, re, really just living for comfort? Talaga po ba namumuhay tayo para lang sa uh, magandang buhay? Mabigyan din ang pamilya natin ng magandang buhay? All of these things are good, but not to the detriment of the calling of the Lord sa ating buhay. Alam po dapat natin itong i- i-prioritize. Ano po yung priority natin? And the Lord, again, can take care of all of these things. The reason why you lose your sense of security is because you put your security in worldly things. If you put your security uh, in the wrong place, then you're going to lose it some, someday. Uh, some people put their security in their money. Some people put their security uh, in, in, in close friends. Kaya nga po kung ang, ang, ang tiwala mo nasa pera, pagka malapit na yung end of the month, wala ka ng security. Kung ang tiwala mo nasa kaibigan mo, nasa close friend, nasa best friend mo, pag aalis na yan, there goes your security with them as well. Kung ang tiwala mo rin ay nandun sa pamilya mo, once they turn their back on you, wala ka na rin security maramdam sa buhay mo. That's the reason why we have to place our confidence, our trust, and our security on nothing but the Lord. Because He's the only one na hindi niya tayo. He will never let us down. He will always be there. He will always be there to help us. Kaya nga po, we should put our security on that. We should not place our confidence in ourselves. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 4 to 5, it says here, And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. You, we should always place that to the Lord. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in the money you have. It can all be gone in the blink of an eye. Don't, trust on your, uh, don't put all your trust in your family because they can even turn their back on you. you don't, trust, don't put all your trust in your friends because we know the saying that best friends can become worse enemies. And I'm sure that some of you have already experienced that. Right? But then, we should only put our confidence, our trust, and our security on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these people, because they were threatened of their lives, they want to stop. They're talking to Nehemiah. We're getting tired. We're getting weak. Uh, there's still so much to be done. I think we, should, we better stop. Now, how did Nehemiah respond to this? Now, uh, as, as we look at how Nehemiah responds to this, let's also look at principles on how to overcome discouragement and all of these things that are the results of discouragement. First is, even though this is not in the text, I just want to put this here that we should manage our exhaustion. We should manage our own selves, our body, our health. And as, 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 as painful as it is for me, I didn't want to talk about this, but it's true. Okay? It says here that as, as simple as their first problem was, they got tired, the solution was equally simple. They should rest. Pagod sila? Pwede magpahinga. Ganun lang po kasi simple yun. Sometimes we get too caught up with the work that we forget that our bodies are limited. Sometimes we get too caught up with what we're doing for the Lord, which is good, but we forget to take care of our own bodies. Now, hindi pa tayo immortal. Hindi po tayo mga superman. Mapapagod at mapapagod ka. And when this time comes, you should learn to be humble enough to stop and pause for a while and take care of yourself. Hindi po masamang matulog. Ay, hindi po masamang magpahinga. Hindi po masamang once in a while mag-relax ka naman. Well, para din naman sa work yun. Why? Pagka napagod ka na, may sakit ka na, ano pang silbi mo? ba? Sabi ko na, yung si mama dito eh. Skip. Ano, <laughs> ano pang silbi mo? Kailangan mo na magpahinga. You take care of yourself. Now, when Hemaya was in the process of turning this uh, situation around, the first thing he did was to pause the work. Okay, tigil muna. Gather around. Usap tayo. Yung sinabi ni Himaya, tigil muna, tigil muna ang work, lahat ng nag-build na, na, sa wall, all of you come here, we should uh, 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 come up with a plan, we should, we should, uh, we just, you should think. Pagod kayo? Pahinga. We should rest, alright? So now, even Elijah, uh, when he got tired, he got discouraged. 
And the very simple solution was he needed to sleep and eat. Ganun lang po kasi simple. First Kings chapter 19 verse 4 to 8. But he said, he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested, ganito po katindi ang kanyang discouragement, for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord, take my life, take away my life, for I am not better than any, than my fathers. I don't know if any one of you have been so discouraged that you prayed that the Lord will just take your life. Now, Elijah, as great as, as he is, as great a man of God as he is, was not exempted with discouragement. Was not exempted when it comes to being tired. Dahil pare-pares lang po tayong tao, mapapagod tayong lahat. And, and what, what did the Lord do? Verse 5, And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise, and what? Eat. Amen yan. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake. Yan na, ito po yung tunay, tamang diet ha. Cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Anong, anong solution ng Panginoon sa kanya? Walang, there's nothing special. Eat and sleep. Eat and sleep. Okay, wake up, eat again, and sleep. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise, and what? Eat. Why? Because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat, 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the Mount of God. Napakadali po ng solusyon ng Panginoon kay Elijah to eat and to sleep. Kaya nga po minsan, napakadali lang din po ng solusyon sa ating pagiging burned out. Pahinga ka muna, kapatid. Hindi sabihin na tig- huwag ka muna mag-attend. Hindi ibig sabihin na huwag ka muna mag-outreach. Ibig sabihin, kumahin ka at matulog. Ganun lang po kasi plan. And we should be humble enough na pagod ako, tigil muna. There are other able men to, to, to pick it up, pick up the slack for me and paghanda na ako, tuloy ko na naman. Kasi po, I, I'm sure that we have realized that lalo na po sa mga uh, matatanda na when your body says I've had enough, kahit na ano pang gusto ng mind mo, wala ka na magagawa. Okay? Yan po yung sinabi ni Kobe Bryant. Di ba? Yeah. <laughs> yung sinabi ni Kobe Bryant, di ba? Naiisip ko pa kung ano yung magandang moves pero ayaw na ng katawan ko. Kaya, tikil na, retire na. Di ba? Pahinga na ako, gawin ko na lang ibang bagay. Kaya nga po, kahit na ano pang willingness mo sa Panginoon, Kahit na ano pang fire mo sa gawain ng Panginoon, kung ang health mo si Rana, pagod ka na. Uh, point number two. <laughs> Do you get the point? Amen. Okay, point number two. Okay, verse number 14. It says here, And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles and to the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brethren and your sons and your daughters your wives and your houses. The, the, the first thing Nehemiah said to them was, refocus, okay? Focus upon the Lord. Second thing that not only manage your exhaustion, your health, but focus upon the Lord. They got distracted. Again, a, a while ago we studied that they've got distracted because of this great work ahead of them. They're tired and all of these things. Marami pang kailangan gawin. They forgot kung kanino talaga nila ginagawa at sino nagbibigay sa kanila ng Panginoon. And Nehemiah's message to them was very simple. Remember the Lord. Alalahanin nyo kung sino ang nagbigay sa inyo ng kalakas kung bakit nandito tayo in the first place. No, the, 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 sometimes when we get discouraged, when we get tired, when we lose our focus, we forget who was responsible to bring us here in the first place. Nakakalimutan po natin kung sino yung nagbigay sa atin ng lakas. Nakakalimutan po natin sino yung nagbigay sa atin na nagsupply ng ating pangangailangan. And somehow, we lose our trust on God when we get discouraged. Diba? Uh, how many times have God failed you in your life? Can you count? Ilang beses po nag-fail ang Panginoon sa buhay mo. He has never failed you. And why do we think during the time of discouragement that He's gonna fail me this time? Kaya nga po, it's ridiculous to think. Kaya nga, when you look back at the times that you got discouraged, it's ridiculous. Why did I not trust the Lord in that time? Ganito pala ang gagawin niya. Bakit ako nang wala ng tiwala? And these people, they forgot that it is God who was working with them. These people forgot that it's God who's working for them and through them. And it's not themselves. Kaya sabi, ng, sabi ni Nehemiah, very simple, remember the Lord. Alalahan niyo, you're tired, you're discouraged, remember the Lord. You're tired, you don't want to continue, remember the Lord. Alalahanin po natin ang kanyang mga pangako sa atin. Alalahanin po natin ang kanyang mga ginawa sa ating buhay. And when you remember, you sit down, you pray, and you remember all the work of the Lord in your life, maybe that is just enough for you to be encouraged again. 
and to stand up and continue working. Focus upon the Lord. Kaya kapatid, kung nawawala po yung focus natin sa Panginoon, let's refocus. Focus po tayo sa Panginoon. And, and, and in the same verse, but we'll just go back verse 13 and 14. I would just like to read 13 and 14. Therefore set I in lower places behind the wall and on the higher places. I even set the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and rose up and said unto nobles and the rulers and to the rest of the people, Be not ye afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your who? For your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Next point that I want to make here is remember what's at stake. When you want to stop, when you're tired and you're ready to quit, remember what's at stake. Bakit mo ba ginagawa in the first place? Kung ginagawa mo to para sa sarili mo lang, sige, tumigil ka na. Stop. Kasi kung sarili mo lang naman, edi alagaan mo na lang sarili mo. But, first we're doing it for the Lord. Second, we're doing it for people that we love. Kaya nga po, when Nehemiah said this to them, he never actually had to say anything else. Nung sinabi lang niya na, you're fighting for your sons, your daughters, your wives, your brethren in your houses. This is enough for people to fight till their death. This is enough for them. Kaya nga po, kung ginagawa natin to para sa mga tao na malapit sa atin, you will have strength to keep on going. Kung sa sarili mo lang, titigil ka. But when you know that your, your daughters or your sons, their lives or their future is at stake, kakalimutan mo yung sarili mo, you will continue. Kung malaman mo na the, the lives of other people are at stake, papatuloy ka. Kunyari, pastor ka, pag tumigil ako, lahat ng mga to, pwede silang ma-discourage, madamay, patuloy. Why? Because it's, it, kasi yun ang katotohanan. We're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing it for the Lord and for other people. That's the reason why we're fighting. That's the reason why we're working. That's the reason why we are, we're standing for the truth of the Word of God. Why? Because there are people who will come before us okay, or behind us. There are people who will come behind us and will follow our footsteps. Kaya po, kung tayo titigil ngayon, papaano na yung mga anak natin? Kung tayo titigil po ngayon, papaano na yung mga susunod? Papaano na itong mga nakatira sa atin ng mga homeboys? If we will just stop, do you think that they have a chance to someday be useful for the Lord? Maybe not. Right? Because God is using you for other people as well. Kaya nga po, isipin natin yun. Now, Nehemiah told them simply, fight for your brethren. Fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters. Fight for your wives. Fight for your houses. Tinawag niya sila, uwi kayo, bantayan niyo ang inyong mga pamilya. The reason why we're doing this is for them in the first place. We're building the wall so that they will be safe. And if you will stop, they will never be safe again. That's the reason why we're doing it. Now, remember that we're fighting our spiritual battle for our families. Not for ourselves. Not, not, not just for ourselves. Kaya kapatid, kung magiging selfish lang po tayo, tigil na lang. But if we, are, but we, if we keep this in mind, patuloy po tayo sa Panginoon. Not only that, verse 15 to 17, And it came to pass, when our enemies heard that it was known to us, and God had brought their counsel to Nob, that we return all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. So, so Nehemiah called everyone, talked to them, encouraged them, told them to refocus in the Lord, told them that you're doing it for your family. But then, uh, when the enemies realized that they already know our plan, maybe they softened their stance. Ba, wala na silang element of surprise. Yun lang naman ang, they're counting on that. Now, the, the, the people of the Lord, they already know our plan. Maybe they have changed their plan. So now, anong ginawa ni Nehemiah immediately? Sent everyone back to work. Okay? Naayos na natin yung problema. Nasolved natin. Tinigil natin yung trabaho. Uh, I encourage you. We talked about it. We made a plan. What's, what's, the next, what's the next step? Go again. Keep on working again. Trabaho na naman. Now, the next point that I want to make here is balance. Okay, if you're discouraged, learn how to balance things. Verse number 16, And it came to pass from that time forth. Ano na yung ginawa nila? What, was the change, what were the changes? That half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the har- harbingers, and the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. Verse 17, And they which build on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, everyone with all one of his hands wrought in the work and with the other hand held the weapon. Now, it was never the same again. The work was never the same again. Why? Because now they realize that they have to work and fight. They have to work and defend. They have to work and battle. They, now, Nehemiah is now striking the balance. Dati wala pang threat sa kanila, work and work and work. Now that people are trying to stop the work, let's work and defend. Work and contend. Work and fight. Kaya ka po bilang mga uh, Kristiyano, kung, ayaw po, kung gusto po natin maiwasan ang discouragement, let's learn how to balance our life. Balance po. This is something, sadly, 
as, 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 uh, as, uh, as a pastor's kid. Sadly, na marami rin po ang kilalang mga pastor's kid. This is something na hindi po na-strike ng mga pastor na balance sa kanilang buhay. Na mga tao na nag-surrender ng buhay na sa Panginoon. Which is good. They give all their time, their effort on the work when they forget that they have families as well. Wala pong balance. Nabigay na nila lahat doon, wala nang time sa family. Kaya maganda ang gaw- Kaya nga po, it's either maganda ang gawain, sira ang pamilya. O sa maayos sa pamilya, hindi naman maganda ang gawain. Madalang lang po na makakita ng balance. Maganda ang gawain, maayos ang pamilya. Yun po yung balance na nating na strike And, and uh, however great your work is, pag sira ang pamilya mo, one click ka lang sa jablo. One class, tapos ka. Why? In, in the first place, yung testimony mo, apektado. And then, wala ka na kuhang lakas ay yung pamilya, eventually you get burned out and quit. Kaya nga po, let's strike that balance. Even sa atin po, mga believers, even sa atin mga hindi pastor, let us strike that balance. Hindi lang din po tayo puro trabaho. Hindi lang din po tayo puro pag, uh, paggawa sa ministry. We also have people that are looking at us and that are looking at us for spiritual encouragement and leadership. Kaya nga po, let's strike that balance. Not, not only that they were digging themselves in again to work, but this time it was balance. They worked and some people were defending and even those that are working, they have swords beside them. And, 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 and that they were able to fight and work at the same time. Verse number 18 to 20, it says here, For the builders, everyone had his own sword girded by his side, and so builded. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. And, and I, want, I like this point. Nehemiah made sure that the one who sounded the warning was beside him. Ganito po ang trabaho ng isang pastor. He's the one who warns people. He's the one who can see danger and can tell people when danger is coming. Kaya nga po overseer. That is one job of the pastor. Kaya nga po, pag ang pastor, plaging kontrabida, warning ng warning, huwag ka mainis, trabaho niya yun. Kaya nga, si Nehemiah, para pag nakita niya yung danger, agad niya masabi, sound the trumpet. Okay? Para malaman ng mga tao, nandun dapat, he should be the first one to warn people. Kaya nga po, kadalasan po niya ito na-realize, lang ang pastor na nilagay ng Panginoon sa, 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 as, leaders, as a leader in the church, may mga nakikita po yung danger na hindi natin agad nakikita na malalaman lang natin once he points it out. At pag hindi pa tayo naniwala, malalaman lang natin pagka nayari na tayo. Kaya nga po, wag po tayo, kung kontrabida ang mga leaders ang pastor, eh ganun talaga, trabaho po nilang kumontra. At trabaho po nilang mag-warn sa atin. So Nehemiah, he realized my job was to look and see if danger is coming, warn them. Verse 19, And I said unto the nobles and the rulers and the rest of the people, the work is great and large and we are separated upon the wall one far from another. Okay? Ma- Malawak ang ginagawa natin, malayo tayo sa isa't isa. Ano yung solution? And in what place therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet? Pag narinig niyo yung warning, anong gagawin? Resort ye thither unto us, our God shall fight for us. Okay, next thing that if we want to avoid discouragement, if we are discouraged, we have to have a strong base. Dapat po meron tayong rally point. Meron tayong lugar na doon tayo kumukuha ng lakas. Meron tayong lugar na doon tayo kumukuha ng encouragement. At sa panahon po natin ngayon, this is what we call the church. This is what we call the brethren. Kaya nga po, ang, ang point na binibigay ni Nehemiah dito, you can never do it alone. When danger comes, you hear the trumpet, it's, it's not time for you to draw your sword and, and fight alone. No. Draw, when you hear the trumpet, ano yung ang sabi ng, ni Nehemiah? Punta muna kay lahat dito. Sama-sama muna tayo and then let's fight. Okay? Na, dahil nakascatter sila sa wall. They're, they're building the wall. So, if they hear the trumpets, kanya-kanya sila may kipaglaban, they'll get defeated. Sabi ni Nehemiah, lahat muna balik, and then we fight together. Our Lord shall fight for us. Now, in, in applying it to our time, our base, our strong base should be the church. Kaya nga po, it doesn't make sense na pag discourage ka, pag may problema ka, pag nangihina ka, lalayo ka sa simbahan. Doesn't make sense. Why? Dito ka kasi lalakas ulit. Yeah, you know, we, we come together, we sing, we, we, we sit under the preaching of the Word of God, we praise the Lord, we encourage each other. Sometimes yun lang, okay na. Pag alis mo, encourage ka na eh. Kaso nga lang, minsan po, sa atin, malungkot ako, discourage ako, di mo na ako a-attend. Ano yun? Para bang lalo, ka, lalo mo nilulubog ang sarili mo. Lalo mo nilulubog ang sarili mo. Yung, yung, lalo yung mga tao na malungkot ako, gusto ko mapag-isa. No. That's not the, discourage ka lang, anong gagawin mo? You should be with people who can encourage you also. You should be with people who can give you strength. And do not fight your battles alone. Kaya nga po may church, ano pa sirbi ng church kung hindi rin ito yung mga tao na magpe-pray kasama natin? Kaya nga po mga kapatid, kung meron tayong decisions to make, nahihirapan tayo, stand up, ask for the prayer of the church. Kaya nga po nandito tayo. 
Paano? Hindi lang naman po yan pampupuno lang ng upuan ng mga, ang mga kapatiran. Nandiyan po sila para tulungan tayo, panalangin tayo sa, sa mga bagay na ginagawa natin. That's the reason why kung hindi po natin tinitake advantage ang ganitong klaseng asset sa buhay natin, para bang sayang lang, huwag na lang din tayo mag -attend. If we're treating each other na hindi rin nila tayo kayang tulungan. Kaya nga po para sa akin, kung ikaw, you make your own decision, you don't include the church in this kind of decision, you don't ask the people of God to pray, you don't ask for counsel with, with, with the leaders of the church. It's either sa tingin mo, they're not good enough to help you, or that you're shy na sabihin sa kanila yung yung problema. Either way, both of them, common denominator, pride. It's just pride. It's either sa tingin mo, ah, this is too much for them, hindi nila ako kayang, uh, uh, nila ako kayang payuhan. Wag na lang, akin na lang. Or sa tingin mo, nakakahiya naman, ayokong sabihin. It's still both pride. The other one is just disguised in humility. It's still pride. Kaya nga po, kapatid, the reason why we're here, sabihin po natin. Ask the people to pray. Kung hindi, kung masyadong personal, still ask them to pray for you. Wag po natin sarili lang. That's the reason why we have a church. Kaya nga po, nandiyan yan. Now, Nehemiah said, you hear the trumpet, danger is coming, balik muna kayo and we'll fight. And then, the, Nehemiah said here that the Lord will fight for us. And we have studied this a lot, that the Lord helps the church, fights for the church, but He does that exactly. He helps people who are together. Kaya nga po kung tayo magkakanya-kanya lang, let's not expect the Lord to fight for us. Let's not do that. The reason why, the, the prerequisite here, Nehemiah said, the Lord will fight for us, but provided you all come back and we do it together and the Lord will fight for us. Kaya nga po, even though the Lord helps us individually, but as a church, when it comes to our goals and all these things, the Lord will only bless that if we're united in doing it. If we're together in doing it. Kung, hindi, kung tayo tayo po hindi rin nagkakasundo, bakit tayo be-bless ng Panginoon? Don't give him the reason. We don't give him a reason to do that. Ayusin niyo muna, magkasundo kayo, then I'll fight for you. Okay? Um, verse number 21 to 23. So we labored in the work, and half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning till the stars appeared. Likewise, the same time said I unto the people, Let everyone with his servants lodge within Jerusalem, that in the night they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard of which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for washing. Okay? So the next point here is uh, if you want to avoid discouragement, we seek to serve one another. We seek to serve one another. Sabi ni, sabi ni Nehemiah sa kanila, wala nang uwi, wala nang alisan, magtulungan na tayo. Ito na tayo. If you're working, some of us will guard you. Okay, if you're, and then after that, napagod, kayo naman na mag-work, iba naman na magbabantay. Tulungan, sabi ni Nehemiah. Now, if you want to avoid discouragement sa buhay natin, let us make sure that we're helping one another. Sa ating simbahan, let's make sure that we're helping and being a blessing to one another. That's the reason why, Ang attitude po natin as we come to church is we want to be a blessing to the people. Amen. Not only that, I will, I will go to church so that I'll be blessed. Because it's sure, you will be blessed. If open lang ang heart mo, makinig ka sa preaching, you will be blessed. But it's a different thing na isipin natin, I'm coming to church and I want to be a blessing to someone. I'm coming to church and I want to be a help to someone. Kaya nga po bilang mga mananampalataya, we are here for one another. We are here looking at each other, ano bang maitutulong ko, ano bang maitutulong ko sa kapatid. May nakikita ka na di-discourage, encourage them. And in the same way, pag ikaw naman discourage, encourage ka din naman nila. Kaya nga po, there's no room for selfishness sa ating simbahan. Hindi po tayo nandito kung para lang malaman natin kung ano yung magagawa sa atin ng simbahan, but kung ano yung matutulong natin sa simbahan. And if we are doing that, and we make sure that we are doing that, then we will avoid, avoid a lot of discouragement in our lives. Dumating ka lang sa church, makita mong maraming gumagawa, kinamayang ka, nakangiti, kumaawit, lahat ng, ng tao ginagawa kung dapat nilang gawin. Sometimes it's enough na, Oh, bakit ako discouraged? May encourage ka na naman and then go out and continue doing work for the Lord. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, if you are here just for comfort and joy and the things that you can get for the church, then you're in the wrong place. If we, we should be here, mga kapatid, to look at the things of every man. Philippians chapter 2 verse 4 says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Nehemiah is a great leader. Nehemiah is a very wise leader. And he sees the problem and he knows how to deal with it. Kaya nga po, we should learn in this chapter that there are oppositions, there are some people who will threaten our way of living, our lives, and all these things, and you're going to get discouraged. But God knows you're going to get discouraged. That's why He placed people around you who can encourage you. Kaya po, wag natin layuan sarili natin doon. 
Huwag po natin i-take for granted ang ating simbahan. Huwag po natin i-take for granted ang ating mga uh, tumatayo sa likod ng pulpito in, in order to remind us of the Word of God. Why? Because all of these things, God is using that to protect you, to make you safe, and, and, and to protect you from this kind of discouragement and from quitting from the Word of God. Kaya nga po, kasalanan mo na lang kung magkikwit ka. Kasalanan mo na lang. Why? May kapatiran ka na eh. May Bible na eh. May preaching na eh. Nag-quit ka pa. It's on you. Hindi po nagkulang ang preaching, hindi po nagkulang ang encouragement, hindi po nagkulang ang church na mag-remind na we're here, we're going to help you, we're gonna pray for you. Kailangan lang na mag-open up ka. And na discourage ka pa rin, nagkamali ka pa rin sa buhay mo, you still made the wrong decision, it's all on you. Kaya nga po mga kapatid, it's, uh, uh, tawag dito, praise the Lord that we have a church that are help that is helping us. Praise the Lord that we have brethren that are willing to help us. Praise the Lord that we have preaching that is based on the Word of God. And if we are going to take advantage of all these things, we are going to avoid uh, being tired. We are going to avoid all of these things that will make us quit in our in our ministry. So, patuloy lang po. Kahit po discourage tayo, let us focus on the Lord and, and, and re, uh, regain our strength, renew our strength, and keep on working for the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, uh, this time that we finish uh, chapter 4. I pray, Lord, that as we saw the...